everyone. Welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have the number one original favorite. I have to remind him every time I see him because his Thank ego you. is just a Well, it's ten- starting to get crazy. It's People a- are really coming for me. <laughs> Chris Frangiola. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. Um, again, if you're watching this, I've got my gold little eye patches that a Juicy Scooper sent me a big box of. And then that covers the bruises that are getting less and less every day, but still not to the level that I can cover them with makeup without looking like a domestic violence victim. Yeah, Which is always weird when I'm in, like, the elevator with Peter. Especially if he is, like, telling me to do something. And Uh. then someone walks in and sees the bruises (laughs) and they're like, um... She fell! Do I have to do that sign? Yeah. Yeah, you got to do something to let people know you're safe. Yeah. Yeah, but I am safe. That's the thing I said to Peter. You are so lucky Right. That this did not happen at our home by ourselves with no children or anything to witness. Right. And I showed up with these bruises Mm -hmm. protecting him. But you you used to have a joke in your act that, like, Peter doesn't care enough to domestic uh, domestic violence, you know? (laughs) Not that. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely his biggest fear to be, like, accused of it. So I'm like, you're so... So maybe Jesus actually loves Peter the most because oh, he had me faint in right. front of 400 people and not alone in the home because yeah. that would be very suspect. I didn't like uh, – I watched your clip on uh, on um, one of those sh- morning – the show you did. Entertainment uh, Tonight or Inside Edition? Inside Edition. I didn't like it. I, no. I thought they played you like you were some Loser. no-name comic. I know. Like, what is that about? This like, woman. This happened to Bob Saget. This comic. Like, they enter, like, she should. Well, let's get They didn't even say your name. No. I'm like, what was that about? No, they didn't. That was the worst. Let's talk about the latest with Bob Saget, okay? Okay. So now Bob Saget's family, uh, according to Dale, Daily Mail, this is everywhere, files an injunction to prevent more details about his cause of death being made public after the autopsy revealed head trauma, head trauma so severe, it was like he'd been hit with a baseball bat. So now, originally, a couple days ago when I did that interview last week, they said, oh my God, it's head trauma. He must have hit his head on the back of a a uh, headboard. The headboard, which I was like, that couldn't be hard enough. I saw the marble bathroom. I'm like, I think many of us, after doing a show, you take a shower, right. you kind of wind down. Maybe he slipped out of the shower, hit his head, yeah. went to bed. That's what I thought. Now, these other doctors are saying, no, this is not a slip on marble floor or, you know, a coffee table. This is like he fell 20 feet kind of a hit on your head. Yeah. I, I So, I mean, <clears throat> I well, don't know. What do you think? I mean, I don't – who knows? But <laughs> this one seemed weird to me right from the get-go. And well, any- I called you when yeah. I first heard about it, mm-hmm. and I said, I think there's something – more to it and it, with all due respect to him which everyone I, says i don't know i Bob. don't i don't know him right. i know everyone loves him yes but when i heard about it i'll just say it now because some of my predictions are not correct okay okay i called you as a witness because i said i think there's something more to this i don't think it's a heart attack i don't think it's like something that happened in his sleep i think maybe and i have no evidence of this but maybe he had a drink Maybe had a social uh, recreational drug of some sort. Yeah, but that's saying no drugs in a system. Right. That's but what that's what I thought. And it was laced maybe with fentanyl. That's what right. I thought. Like, not an intentional fentanyl thing, but it's such a big happening so everywhere, especially in right. Florida. So then they said, you know, then it first came out no drugs, no nothing. Now this head trauma thing. And the family, his wife and his three daughters, are saying, we don't want this out. Because I'm like, did he have the black guys? When they found him at four o'clock. Right, right. Um, and, but I, I'm like, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to know every fucking thing if you were his family. Like, well, I think they do. They don't want everyone to know it. I, that's what I get from I don't reading think, the article. But I, I, but I don't think that's right either. Yeah. Because you're a public figure. And if there's somebody that followed him home or that he invited in his room to hang out with or whatever. Right. And something happened. Or someone, a random person followed him to the elevator. Don't we want to see every single piece of surveillance from where he drove his car from the club to the Ritz Carlton to getting out of the car? Like, don't we want to see everything to make sure that there's not some awful person running around? Yes. Yeah. But, and, and of course, there's got to be, uh, all these hotels have 
footage, right. not in the rooms, but in the you know in the lobbies and right. hallways and parking lots. So, I mean, I'm sure this will all be coming out in the next couple of days. I think you know this is the beginning of. Um, we all thought it was a little strange when we heard head trauma. And we're like, oh, really? That I didn't think – you know, we all thought it was like a heart attack or yeah. something a 65-year-old man would die of, a stroke or something like that. But then when head trauma, we were everyone was like, hmm, that's weird. Because how does a guy alone in a hotel room get head trauma outside of falling down in the shower? I think falling down, right. waking up, being a guy on your own, being a guy who's 65, who has a 40-year-old wife, right. who wants to feel young and hip – doesn't want to admit that, like, I'm so embarrassed that I, I fainted or I got disoriented. Yeah. Um. So I'm okay now. I'm just going to go to bed, have some coffee in the morning, and be fine. That's what I thought. And and that made a lot of sense to me. Like, yeah. you know, you're traveling alone. You're going to call, like, the doorman. Are you going to – do you really want to go to the ER at that time? Like, you right. know, it's just you, too. You're not concerned for a loved one. You're about yourself. And sometimes you don't care about yourself the way you do other people. So I I like – I just, I I don't know. Now, I looked up Natasha Richardson's death after mine because I was trying to remember it, Liam Neeson's, you know, wife. Yeah, the one who fell skiing. She was skiing without a helmet, hit the back of her head. They said, um, the instructor that she was with said, I really insist you go to the hospital. She's like, no, 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 fine. She goes back to her room. She calls Liam, who's on the set. She's with the two boys, 12 and 13. She's like, oh, I took a tumble. He's like, oh, you know, relax. At three o'clock, okay, Somebody in her home or a nanny witnesses that she's, like, not acting like herself. Right. So they're like, you really need to go to the hospital. She goes to the hospital. It's some part of Canada. It's not the greatest hospital in the world or whatever. But they – so they – they're like, oh, my God. They immediately put her on life support. They call the Liam. He comes in, and they're like, she's brain dead. We ran a test on her skull, and it's like the brain – is mush to the side. Yeah, that's what happens. There's a fluid around the brain that has to be there. So once my, that fluid yeah. goes away, that's when you. So start my question issues. is: this doctor that's saying this is like severe head trauma, like someone hit him with baseball bat, could it be that you know inspecting him ten hours after the fall? Right. I mean, because you know they found him at four in the afternoon. The fall could have happened at two thirty a.m. Whatever. Could it be that they? You know, it looks different. Right. That it looks more severe than than what it was had he walked into the hospital at 3 a.m. Could it also be that the doctors are saying it was like he'd been hit with a baseball bat, like he was hit with a baseball bat. Like, you know what I mean? Like, are they saying – I feel like that was a strange thing to say. Like, there's other ways the doctors could have said – he he's suffered head trauma of that. What do they got to gain from it? What do you mean? I'm saying maybe they're like you should investigate this more because he was hit with a baseball bat. You know, I feel like that was an odd way for them to mm, put it. I don't know. Doctors are odd. You know what I mean? Like, was it a fight? Did somebody come up to the room? I'll just spell it out. Okay, spell it out. Tell me your. Th- I told you my theory. Was there hookers? Some guy comes up. You owe this. I this. I'm just. This is me going. Yeah. Whack him in the head. I don't know. You know, and then snuggle him in his bed and have him lay down like. Oh, this. I don't know what what position they, they, he was they found. They found in. him like this, asleep in his bed with his hand like over his heart, like peaceful. Okay, so maybe it's all just I fell in the shower and you know there's nothing to it. I don't know. Um, so maybe the so you're saying maybe the family wants it private in case a darker side of his extracurricular life. Right. It's revealed and they want him to go off with the memory of every comic saying he's the nicest guy in the world. Which he which people are raving about. Right. You know, and that was Well, I always you know, the nicest people in the world. OJ, nicest to every bus boy in all of Beverly Hills. And I'm not comparing <laughs> right, him to OJ. Right. But I'm saying, yeah. yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe right. you know, maybe his wife and his family knew that he had this, you know, other side or you know, to wind down from after a show and they, they're afraid that's going to be revealed somehow and they don't want that. I don't know. I know at this point, you know, I'd be like, yeah, let's find out. If some fucker did this to him, I want to yeah. know who did. I'm also going to now talk about a syndrome that nobody's talking okay, about. Okay, why don't you? And uh, it, it, <laughs> I will. <laughs> it's a syndrome nobody's talking God. about. And I believe that it, 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 it is the fall of many men okay and maybe women perhaps and it is 
alone in a hotel room syndrome. Okay. You you stay long enough in a hotel room by yourself, you start to get a little kooky. I believe this is what happened to Tiger Woods. All of a sudden, he's you know just too much time on his hands. I believe comedians who are in a lot of hotel rooms, yeah. things like that begin to, you start to get a little kooky and do things you probably wouldn't necessarily do if you were home living your normal life. Am I wrong in saying that? Yes, but in his case, he finished the show and drove an hour to a Ritz and yeah. checked in. right. So it was, that's where I thought, you know what, you know, when you've done a few hotels in a row and then you literally are like, oh my God, I cannot remember what my hotel room is because two days ago I was 832. Yeah. I literally can't remember what I am right now. Or when you wake up and you like open the closet thinking that's the bathroom. Yeah. You know, that can happen as well. So that's more right. where I thought that being disoriented, once once I knew, when I originally told you my theory, which mm -hmm. I, of course I was wrong, I thought he went back to his hotel that was, you know, a block from the club or right. two blocks from the club, a mile. I did not know he was coherent enough to get in a car and drive and check into a hotel and all that stuff. Yeah, I don't think he's a drinker or a drug guy or anything. I don't, that doesn't seem like what well, I'm, I don't know what I'm now. hearing from people. Why but are now, we keeping it a secret? So anyway, anyway, this will I mean, continue. Spe speaking of, of that, I, I thought... I had reached the end of um, forgetting your hotel room. I thought the Juicy Scoop phenomenon had reached its end a couple of years ago when you and I were in Seattle and we were doing the Triple Door. Yes, what happened? And you, you had done a long week of shows. I think you were a little stressed <laughs> and it was pouring rain outside of the Triple Door in Seattle. Yeah. And you had a big box of merch. <laughs> T-shirts. This is yeah. before you yeah. know you've gotten to this success. Or me this just saying I'm not selling this is, this shirts is when you're myself anymore. Around a, a yeah. box of T-shirts, oh. and it was pouring rain, and you forgot what hotel you were in, and we were going separate ways because I was in a different hotel, <laughs> and you were standing there crying in the middle of the road with a wet cardboard box. <laughs> And not knowing what the hell to do. Like, how and did I, I doing, make it home alive? I know. I was doing my best to try and figure it out, but... Did you just leave me there? No. We eventually <laughs> figured it out. But there, you were in a hotel with a several in the same area. It's like a Hilton, oh. but there were four Hiltons. You're like, oh, I don't yes. know Oh, yes. There's Hilton Garden, Hilton. and then there's Hilton Dedala. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, when I got into the car, I was like, I think she's going to be out of the business. <laughs> like, I think this, if there's anything going to make her quit, it's the wet cardboard <laughs> box in the middle of Seattle. Oh. I'm glad you stuck it out. I'm sticking yeah. it out. I'm going back. <laughs> on the road <laughs> oh hello i didn't see you there but you see me because you're watching this but have you subscribed have you told a friend have you liked it have you copied the link and texted it to someone you love or you just feel like being a nice person to please do that it keeps us going so if you like watching juicy scoop here on youtube subscribe like and share <laughs> all right let's talk about the latest of the kanye julia fox thing this is pretty juicy. This is from Hollywood Unlocked. And there is this girl, Azalea Banks. She's a, yeah, she's a singer or something, right? I feel like she's, her name is always out there, but I don't really know. She's going after Julia Fox. Yeah. Okay. And she takes Julia Fox's post that she did um, the day after Super Bowl when it came out that Julia Fox and Kanye are now done and that they did a report saying, we saw her crying at LAX. Julia does on a story. She says, y'all would love it if I was so upset. The media would love to paint a picture of me, a sad, lonely woman crying on a plane by myself. But it's not true. Why not see me for what what I am, which is a number one hustler? I came up, y'all, LOL. Wait, who's not that? Who's that? saying this that? Is That's Julia. Julia Fox? Yeah. Not only that, but <clears throat> Kanye and I are on good terms. I have love for him, but I wasn't in love with the man, Jesus Christ. What do you guys think I am? A 12-year-old, she wrote. She also responded to a report claiming she was seen crying on an airport at the at an airport over the split and for the record the only time i cried in 2022 was on february 6th on my dead bffs b day oh okay well that's well, nice. nice to give her a yeah. shout out yeah it's okay nice. anyway if you want the full tea you're gonna have to buy the book when it comes out oh, so this is all this was all to get a book. i've i always felt that relationship was a little strange <laughs> what more are you going to tell us about the two months that you went shopping i don't need to yeah. read your stupid book <laughs> no, okay yeah. like god shut yeah. up 
Okay, and so- then Kanye made me put on another ski mask. You know, yeah, I don't- <laughs> she's got to wear some weird cut face covering thing. And I'm sure she wrote an NDA, and she can't say yeah. that. I don't even think they screwed. I, I mean, don't think so either. I don't think ve- they screwed. Yeah. I think this was just all whatever their weird act together. And so then this girl is Azelia writes on it. We already know the T, fool ya. Yeah. You came to Miami looking for sex work. Same lawyer was in contact with ye, and it was a weak PR stunt from the jump. What did you hustle for? What did you hustle him for? A bag and some Lucians? I don't know what that means. You absolutely did not come up because if this is how a woman who always dates billionaires behave when shit goes south, threatening tell-all books, you can kiss your days as a low-rate escort. Goodbye, sis. Wow. And then she wrote um, below, too, Azelia wrote, the things you have made public in regards to your drug abuse probably had no clue about, ye probably had no clue about in the beginning, are not what he needs to be associated with in any custody battle that may arise in court during divorce proceedings. You're a liability, sis. The fact that you thought he'd pick you over his children just reeks of entitlement, a lack of any real motherly instinct, and proves that you are in fact a woman child. We won't be purchasing your book. I wouldn't write it if I were you. It'll make you look racist and bitter. You are not you're not Kareem Stefan's level of legendary. Who the heck is that? You're already. Do you know who that is? No. You've already told your secret, sis. It's over. Well, I agree with this girl. So, so do I. Basically, I'm, the I'm scoop on, is I'm all she for saw her Banks. as a hooker. She said she's a. She was an escort and whatever. Now, Julia Fox, as she does her interview, you know, with Caller Daddy, and she's like. I was the muse and uncut chums. <laughs> like, I hate her voice. Anyway, she said, I was a dominatrix. I was a heroin addict. I hate my baby daddy. I mean, okay. And yeah. then and then Kanye's going to be like, I don't want Pete Davidson around my kids. Well, I don't think I want this chick around, yeah. you know, Kim's kids. Like, anyway, then it gets juicier. She's asshole buddies, as my dad would say, with Anna Sorokin. Uh huh. Yeah, this is that woman for, from yeah. Inventing Anna. I finished the series. You did? I heard it's a long one. <sighs> yeah, it's one of those ones they could tell in an hour, but it takes nine parts to oh, tell. Oh my god! And I read the article when it came out right. years ago in like Vanity Fair yes, or whatever. Yes, and that was enough. I got it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So anyway, she is absolutely horrific. She's mean. She's awful. She makes the court and the jury and her attorney uh, wait f- half an hour before she comes out during her trial because she doesn't like her outfit. She makes the writer of the New Yorker, who they call him Manhattan in the show, yeah. run and get her clothes at H M and give her her own clothes H and M and says that she hates the clothes and she calls her fat and awful. And the main character, who is the other writer from the New Yorker magazine that wrote about, is like. So upset when she gets convicted of some of the crimes and has to do some time. I yeah. didn't understand why anyone had sympathy for this woman right. because she's an immigrant and a girl. Like, why do we sympathize? She's absolutely awful, awful, awful. Well, uh, she is pals with my other most hated Julia person. Fox. Yes, which makes sense. So. Uh, Anna uh, Delvey, which was the fake name, a surprise friendship with Kanye X. Okay, so um, so then she said that she was so Anna gets out of prison only after a few years. It really yeah. wasn't that bad. She goes on a clubhouse. Club, yeah, yes, that's that thing where people talk to each other, right? It's on online. People begged me to do yeah. it. I said oh, I'm not interested. Too. Thank, Thank God, God. I, I got out of that one because there's like six of them. I out don't there even now. know if Clubhouse is still happening. It's Who cares? still happening for three comedians. Well, Julia Fox got on it and and asked her all these questions, and Anna said, "Oh, you know, I was answering people's questions about my experience, and she made the form so much better. She asked all the right questions. We have similar sense of humor." First of all, you have no sense of humor. So uh, my my instincts about Julie Fox is right. right. You're both two least unfunny, hustling fake bitches I have I'd be right. done. So anyway, um, 
Now, Anne is also working with the surviving R. Kelly producers on a limited docuseries that will follow her as she awaits deportation, because she's in ICE, back to uh, Germany. Okay. Uh, no. Yeah. No. I saw... I don't want to... He- I. The actress playing your horrible accent, she did a great impression, but you are horrible. Your accent is horrible. I don't need to see another docu series about you going back to Germany. Just fucking go. Right. And take Julia Fox with you. <laughs> but I guess if Julia Fox will be part of this thirsty doc, then of course it'll happen. There's a. Uh... Yeah, a lot of scamming going on. These two, I guess, you know, and then, of course, uh, the the Tindler Swindler scamming. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. But also, Uh, Julia Fox says in some post, you know, my girl's killing it. My sis is killing it behind bars. And I'm like, what an expression to use when you're behind bars killing it. What so how did it? how did her and Kanye, like, how does a girl like this meet Kanye West? And Uh, I I just told you, according to Azealia. Oh, it, she was an escort, and see it, some PR slash pimp hooked it up. Oh, that's what she's saying. That is what she's saying. Oh, so she's not really an actress or anything. She's not in show I business. I was in Uncut Gems. Yeah. <laughs> uncut know, Gems. I, I, know I was, I was saying, in News and Uncut Gems. I saw Uncut Gems. It was okay. Oh, but God. I, well, I'm I mean, never going to see it. But was she like auditioning for roles? Is she an actress like in the she business? She is an actress. She was a former teenage dom- dominatrix, then heroin act, act heroin addict, <laughs> then. Well, you know, I obviously went the wrong route in this show. In show business, and then it's like, I really, you don't think that's going to scare the kids with that ugly makeup and the jean matching jean outfits? I feel like everyone's go buttoning everything to the top now. Oh, is that, is that the hot it. look? Everybody going right up to the top. So then, <laughs> Julia Fox wrote on her on Anna's thing. Thank you for the B day wishes. I was recording when you called. Recording what, you idiot? Oh, there you go. Thank you for the Your B-Day wishes. Oh. This is them hanging out. Whoa. Where's yeah. that? Look at those two. Well, the one girl doesn't look like she's having fun. The other girl's having a time of her life. Anna never has fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. I only ate the best food and not smile. I like nice clothes. Um, and then she's wearing some, like, trying to have, trying to make her ass look big, which really doesn't, Julia Fox. Ugh. Um, Who, uh, I just don't understand the scamming. I, you know, I'm one of those people, I, it te- very quickly, I'm like, nah, I'm out. You know, like, as soon as I got to any point where I was like, I'm going to need $20,000, I'm like, no, wait, I'm done. You know? I mean, how quickly do you pull out? I can't believe people still get scammed. Like, watching Tinder Swindler, I was like, well, this with, is insane. with the girl that wrote the Vanity Fair article, in fact, she, um... Anna, in the end, was not convicted of that crime. Right. Because they did kind of, And I remember reading this, too. I was like, okay, you were this girl that hooked on to the heiress. You liked that this girl picked up every single thing. Right. The girl said, go to Morocco. But, and you maybe never really made it clear, like, 100%, yeah. like, in an email, you're paying for everything, right? Because I absolutely, I can't even pick up a lunch. Like, I'm a broke writer at Vanity Fair. So then her, Anna's attorney, made it look that Rachel... Had a very uh, easy life. She went to a fine school. She had nice parents. She got a job three months out of coming here. Yeah. And do we really feel sorry for her that she was, you know, stuck with $62,000? And then we find out that Amex forgave it. And then she made several hundred thousand on her book and story. Yeah. So it was like, mm, did you really suffer that much? But when I read the article from her in first person, I really did feel for her because I'm like, then she ran. Then she ran her around for months. Anna. She would meet her at places right, and be like, "I'm going to give you this. You know, I'm going to give you this." Yeah. Instead of just being like, "Girl, I, you know, you're never getting it, or you're broke." Like she kept thinking, "No, I'll get it to you," you know, because she thought her forty million would come in, and then she'd be able to pay back her friend yeah. and keep a friend and keep the thing going and the whole. The whole thing, but I um. So I don't need to watch this show on Netflix, right? Because I was I was starting it. And yeah, was, yeah, I don't. I don't know. It gets a little <clears throat> bit better, and I'm glad I completed it. But the voice, she's so awful. Her character, and yeah. she's just. I don't know. I anybody would, would be even... rooting for this girl. Yeah. Right. At all. Like, please send her back to Germany and mm-hmm. let's never see her ugly, entitled, bitchy face again. Right. <laughs> and take Julia Fox with you. Yeah. Go film. I think we're done with Julia Fox. I don't think you'll see much more oh, out of her. Like, 
and there's no there's no book to be had. No, absolutely not. No. I mean, you know, out of maybe some self published one. That I don't know. Said. Um, I just saw this is uh, North and and her mom Kim wearing pink. I mentioned this yesterday that there's this phenomenon where girls are like at eight turning like they're fifteen. Pink. No, not pink. pink. But I zoomed in. She has full long oh. Khloe Kardashian nails at third grade. Third grade. Oh, she's only in third grade? She is eight. She will not be nine until June 15th. Oh, yeah. That's a little much. She can't do that. I mean, I don't want to be critical of, of mothers who have daughters today. I understand. Yeah. They've been in mass for three years. The only joy they might get is having long nails. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm suggesting that you don't start right. your kid on that route or just die. paint the nails. And also, don't send them, don't let them get highlights too young, too. Okay. These are two things that have to continue yeah. until you're 80. Right. Don't right. start them Good too point. long. Same with eyelash extensions, yeah. lip injections. Oh, don't let your girl start any of this shit too young. I agree. I'm, um, I'm with you on all Because once things. you start with the fake nails, you can't just pull them off. Like you could occasionally take your little girl to get them painted. Yeah, that's painting. just something to do. But mm-hmm. once you start with the fake, that is something that should be, you know, for a working woman. Yeah. Like, that's my advice as a mom. Come at me. I don't really care. Um, what was this? Oh, this is another Anna Delvey thing. Oh, she'd written after Oprah's thing with the two English assholes, yeah. Megan and Harry. I know what it feels like to lose my voice. Megan and xdelvmail.com you see it oh shut up lose your voice shut up okay you were talking about Tindler Swindler yeah I mean I just keep reading about it you he's, know? he's on fire now he wants to be a movie star he wants to come to Hollywood and he's doing cameos for 300 bucks yeah <laughs> and I do them for 20 if anybody wants one <laughs> <laughs> so who is like, oh my God, my girlfriend and I were super horny for this guy. I'm going to pay him $300 and this is what I want him to say to my friend. I'll pick you on a jet, pick you up on a jet right. with my child. Uh, my enemies are my after. Enemies what do you have him right. say? I know. I guess just who knows? Do the cameo. Do yeah. the cameo as him. And this is for my friend, Stacy. She's turning yeah. 32 and she's single. And I got a cameo from Simon from Tinder Swindler. Go. Oh, oh, hi, Stacy. Simon, my friends are after my enemies are coming for me. Get it? Anyway, happy birthday. <laughs> I hope you now because they're always reading. Yeah, what yeah, you yeah. do on cameos. Like, uh, your husband says here you have two dogs. They sound like they're swindlers too. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you have a great birthday and um, keep keep being a fan of what. I don't know. <laughs> Swindling. Okay, I, have, I don't know what I have you're another cameo for you to yeah. do, Simon. Oh, no. This is please give my friend uh, Kelsey a shout out. She's turning 26. She's single. And if you can also ask her to borrow her credit card because yours aren't working, just like you did <laughs> in the series. Thanks. 300 bucks. Better do it if you want your 300. Go. Hi, Kelsey. <laughs> it's me, Tinder Swindler. <laughs> Happy birthday. I have my credit card, you know, from the show. And it's not working. Can I borrow your credit card? Anyway, happy birthday. Hope it's a great one. It says here that you have your great mom and you. <laughs> but I'm like, so what do you do? The person that bought this is like, sends it to their girlfriend and they're like, isn't that funny? Yeah. I know. I don't know. Like I out of everybody, it. like I get it when you yeah. have like a joke about somebody and you want them to say something right. or when I do then people are like, oh, do your impression. My friend loves mm-hmm. your this impression. But like, okay. Anyway, he got a manager. He is playing. He wants to do a dating show. I mean, whatever. Just these days. It just is. But the thing is, people think like for this moment, like this is so huge. We have to jump on it. This stuff gets old really Real, quick. It's already old. It's already old. Yeah. Like, who cares? We've all seen it. Like, the cycle of, of, of people with no talent and just are famous for being, you know, whatever. An asshole? Having an ass or, or whatever these people are famous for. It, that, that ends real quickly, you know? It's just, I don't know. Like, how long can this guy be? But maybe, like, God, I watched the other day. Celebrity Big Brother. I know. Let's talk about it. You are you what? First of all, I don't know Big boring. Brother. It's, I never really yeah. watched Big Brother. Me neither. I don't know I'm the regular bored one. Out of my mind. Yeah. So I, I I tune into Celebrity Big Brother. Yes. I swear to God, 
it's so weird because nobody looks like they're having fun. And I, they all look like they're being held hostage. They and are. I, I, but they, I'm not like, kidding. They like, want to stay as long as they can for the money. Like it's not even cutesy. They're not even like having like laughing and joking. They're like, I mean, at one point, Chris Kattan, that poor <laughs> bastard, whatever the fuck is wrong with him, I don't even know. But he's, you know, we've worked with him. He's got problems. <laughs> he's literally like begging. He looks at the camera and says, and, let me out, please. I want to go home. Like he's being held hostage. This is like a hostage video. And they don't let him go home. They send another girl home. And Katan's like, afterwards, the credits are rolling and they're showing the people, you know, milling about in the house. And Chris Katan. Honestly, just- these are the things that scared me about Big Celebrity Big Brother, if they were ever to ask me. I know from Ross, I don't know if this is still the case, right. that it's like being in an airplane. There's no fresh air. And you can't walk out. Now, I don't know if they have open air where you can walk out, but that freaks me out more than anything. But is it uh, – see, this is what I have to know. I, I became a little obsessed with it after okay. I watched it. yeah. And I watched 10 minutes of it. But right. then I'm like, I need to know – like, is it a fake, like, you're stuck in this house? Like, you're stuck in this house, but you can leave and just come back for filming time. No. Or are they really no. stuck in the no. house? No, you are stuck in the house. That's crazy. You cannot leave. You cannot talk to your kids. You cannot anything. There's Live stream camera, you can watch it. I know. I, so then I, I started watching that, and it's just people the live sleeping stream. and snoring. Yeah. I'm like, why would anybody want? Okay, I'm, I'm, this is going to sound crazy, and I know maybe it's a financial thing. Like, right. honestly, if you, I, I get it. Celebrity is a weird thing, and eventually you get to a point where you just need a couple bucks. And listen, well, if you, if also you, it keeps you relevant. It might lead to something else. But it your never agents does. talking but it, you, know you what into I mean? it. But it never does. Yeah, it never does. We all know it never does. It never lead. It leads to more shit work. You know what I mean? It leads to Dancing with the Star. It doesn't lead to, and the nominees are Chris Kirkpatrick for Best Actor. That right. doesn't lead to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just more. It leads to more shit than a hundred thousand dollars or whatever. But I'm not kidding when I say, like, wouldn't it be more respectful to go get a job at Home Depot than have people film you snoring? Like, it just seems, like, so desperate to me that I would be like, you know what? So if they call me, you think I should say no? Absolutely say no. Okay. I would look, like, step down. I think I will say no. You should 100% say no. I don't think it's my jam. I I just don't know that. First of all, I'm not going to do that well on it because I'm not good at sports or puzzles and things like that <laughs> i will be kind of fun and entertaining well that's the but thing. then i'll look ugly i'll get shit for not being clean like cleaning enough so i'll probably try really hard to be like super clean in the beginning and then right. start to get tired with it yeah and um oh god i could reveal something i'm not supposed to reveal uh-huh and then that would screw me over like that i say something about a celebrity that you know i've been yeah. hiding for years mm-hmm. even on juicy scoop i can't believe she's you know never said yeah. this um. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but now, uh, now let me just say. Also, I think this show could be fixed if you got some entertaining people who kind of have fun with it. Like nobody's having fun with it. It's it's a bunch of boring, weird people. Well, like it's the surreal life was so freaking fun. I know. That's Why what can't I'm they saying? make like, it like the surreal people. life? Yeah. Like uh, you know, like I'm saying, like a you or a Bert Kreischer well, or somebody also, who makes it fun. I also think why not mix it with people that actually might have some relationships with the uh, which, with right. each other, just like you would housewives. Yeah. yeah, if you had all comedians or something that kind of know each other, kind of don't, maybe there's some beef, maybe there's a little bit of competition, but they also make each other laugh. But they have to go and go, we have to get a UFC wrestler. We have to get an Olympian. That's we have to get a YouTuber. A we have to get a Nickelodeon person. Then we have to get, you know, two housewives, one has-been person. One, like, yeah. And then there's no chemistry with these people right they i don't know. know like it would be like what kind of made celebrity big brother fun is that brandy glanville and ross really did know each other yeah right, right. and so they kind of had a little bit of a rapport and it was a and little they, bit fun and then ross also really hit it off with um marissa and like that i was like yeah that yeah, makes that was sense. fun because they're both fun. there's no yeah. fun people on it no oh, listen, i let i know we're, we're trying to stuff this lamar odom down everyone <sighs> it, it, lamar odom's not the answer to entertaining television you know and they're even like he pooped his bed i'm like what like that's that's what because he has ibs that came out i'm like god if you didn't think chloe had it bad before okay with him having hookers getting her brother She's whatever gotta, just gotta keeping change his sheets every he has night. to go down to his dark room and he, drugs yeah. and this and that it's hard to going understand. to the bunny ranch yeah also 
you know, he's got, now we know yeah. he had a shitting problem this he's whole got time. An irritable bowel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Anyway, Jesus. what about what about Anna Dalvey and Simon? They do a show about I mean, what would you do with these people? Have them tell how they do uh scams on people? Yeah. Put them in scenarios where they have like a little bit of a like a prosthetic and see how much they can get from someone off the street with hidden right. cameras. I don't know what to do with these people. Uh, I, I just go away. I know that this once again goes back to my yeah. show that I, you know, cancel house where you just get all these people who are canceled for whatever reason and put them in a house together. Let's see mm. what happens. I actually think celebrity comedy Big Brother is way better. They had something like that one time. They did, but I think it was Nobody, scripted. But no one ever wants Amy to Amy Schumer give, was on it. They and, never want to give comedians a job, but that's what they should do. I just want to, at least a few of them. It doesn't have to be all comedians, but throw a few comedians in with Lamar Odom, and then it might be a little more entertaining. You know? I think they thought Chris Kattan was going to be the comedian, but he's right. really more of an actor than a stand-up. Yeah, and he's a also got a, he's got a stiff neck or something. He doesn't move He had right. an accident on Dancing with the Stars, which No, he did. but even before that, he broke his back. I don't know. He said he broke his back doing what Saturday Night Live character or something. Okay. <laughs> Listen, the Julia, guy's gonna... <laughs> Julia Hart on the Netflix show, My Unorthodox Life. Mm-hmm. I've hung out with her a few times. She was an Orthodox Jew that had to wear the wig and everything for years. Yeah. She escaped, as she calls it escapes. The Orthodox Jews hate that I use the word escape. She left the marriage and left the religion. And all of a sudden had a shoe line that then oh. was bought by La Perla. And then the owner of La Perla fell in love with her, married her, and made her the CEO and part owner of Elite Modeling, World Elite Modeling Agency wow. or something. That's a, that's a anyway, then she gets a Netflix show. And yeah. so we see she has the finest of all the clothes. I mean, I'm talking every kid probably only has Chanel underwear if they even make underwear. Just uh-huh. – and I had her on my show, and I'm like, can you just explain to me how you go from, like, making your own matzo ball soup <laughs> to living in a $65 million house yeah. and feeling comfortable buying, you know, a Chanel bra? Like, you know, right. if you're going to buy something Chanel, you're like, I'm going to save it for the purse, you know, a jacket, something that everyone can see. But I'm telling you just the amount. And she's like, well, I may, I, I'm working and I make the money, whatever, too. She... Has filed for divorce. First, oh. she was fired from CEO. Mm-hmm. Then she filed for divorce. Then he filed a suit against her saying that she took $850,000 from the you know, company's money and put it in her own personal accounts. Right. Now the staff, according to page six, says she was an entitled nightmare who made us cry. Um, I texted her and was like, I'm sorry you're going through this. She's like, just wait. Like, all the truth will come out. Oh, good. So we'll see. Yeah. But I hung out with her and it was an extravagant lifestyle. Where is this? New York City? You guys went to, out in New York or something, right? I was supposed to go to New York and eat at her at her house, but she had to go to a Miami fun thing instead. Then I was supposed to walk in her fashion show in February. <laughs> you were going to be like a, a model? Yeah. Oh, that would have been fun. Didn't hear boo. Now, obviously, she's going through some shit. You'd be wearing okay. like La Perla shoes or something? What? I mean, I would, no, I would just wear like probably just some cute outfit. I don't know. Oh, whatever. That would be it was, fun. And then I would be featured on the Netflix show and the whole thing was a plan. Oh, okay. But now we're in February and, you know, I'm a liability now for yeah, falling yeah, over on yeah, stage. Especially on a catwalk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but. She led a very wealthy life. Right. I mean, when I went to the Gucci fashion show with her, you know. Oh, that was the one that was out on Hollywood Boulevard or something? Yes. And all the people that was with going. Her? Yeah. All the people that were invited were Gucci's best clients. Oh. So you had to spend a lot of money on Gucci <clears throat> to be invited. And I was her plus one. And the Gucci stylist was flown out from New York. Okay. You have a tiny, tiny wallet. It's a Gucci. Ah, uh, it's Gucci. If you want to invite me to your next show, I'll be happy to go. <laughs> and um, all right, we don't have to. 
Anyway, yeah. but what was so interesting about her is because she led truly this life where you couldn't read People magazine or yeah. watch TV, there's so many things that I would talk to her about and she would not know what I was talking about. Just because she wasn't in that, yeah. I mean, she was like curious, but it was just like, I'm like, you know, when Julia Roberts was married to what? No, yeah. no reference. No, like literally that. What was that show? Uh, whatever. Kimmy Schmitz or whatever. Yeah. The Unbreakable Kimmy. Yeah. Which is about a girl that was like in like some weird religious cult yeah. and just plopped into New York City. I swear. I said, have you seen that show? She said it was it's too painful for her to watch. Oh. Because it is like that. And then I was like, I really think it would be fun if we did a bit. You know, where right. I'm like actually like explaining all this stuff that you've like missed yeah. because she just doesn't know. Mm -hmm. But she seemed very confident in talking about her businesses and fashion and modeling and all that. That she seemed confident in talking about. Yeah. But very interesting. So anyway, it's all being caught on season two. Oh, so that'll be season two. Of yes. This, uh, so yeah. if you weren't into it before. Life. I heard it's good. I haven't watched it. I uh, Well, they acted very in love in season one. Yeah. Um, there were some things she said to me out that made me wonder if it was all love in paradise. Isn't so I'm, funny that I'm you're not like friendly surprised. With these people, you have like, you really do have the juicy scoop. <laughs> I'm not surprised that they got that they're breaking yeah. up. There were some things that seemed would be difficult to fix. It's amazing how you how quickly you become friends with people. That's both. It, it's great. I like it. I'm a delight. I've had the same two. Uh, you and Sarah Colon are my only two friends the last 25 years. Well, I never, you know, I don't make friends with anybody else. I'm good with. The two. I can make new friends. I can pretty much keep some old. Some of the old friends are uh, get tired of me though. <laughs> they they're like they've moved on. I know I'm still okay with, but I don't see a lot of you. Like you, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like I could, get, I understand how it could be a little much. <laughs> 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 it's not no. i'm a great type <laughs> anyway are, are i type. wish their family the best and i think it'll be a very juicy season okay alec baldwin the family for helena hutchinson has filed a wrongful death suit on tuesday against alec baldwin for fatally shooting the cinematographer on the set of rust Okay, did you see tell me the they also made a computer graphic yes. of the incident which was horrific. Which, it, I know it's very horrific and very strange looking. Like it's, it looks like a video game. Yes. And he's in it. I don't know. This whole thing is just, I mean, it's just, I feel, I'm going to say this and I know people will be angry at me for it. I feel bad for him. I just feel like it was an accident and it's ruined his, like you just see his, the bags under his eyes. Oh, I've never seen any. I mean, it, it's, all, it's all weighing on his face if yeah. you watch his Instagrams. And um, I feel bad. You know, guys got – I mean, I don't know. I feel bad for her as well. Of course, that's awful what happened to her family. But, I mean, it was an accident. You know, let's face it. How it happened, why it happened, it was just stupid. Maybe she probably shouldn't have put the gun in that direction. But it was an accident. I mean, yes, but I mean, as the family, your your wife and the mother of your nine-year-old son is gone and you're meeting with attorneys and the attorneys might say, we have to include him. Oh, of course. We have to include all these people yeah. in order for you to get the most possible amount, which you want. You know, yeah. it's like you got to raise your kid alone by yourself. You're depressed, you know. So, and he was producer on the film and everything like that. Right. But I do, I mean, I do feel badly to have that weighing on your shoulders, just like somebody that, like, you know, uh, gets in a car accident and kills someone and they weren't drinking and they weren't doing anything wrong. Right. You know, yeah. like it can, that can happen, you know, and it's, it's awful. Yeah. You know, it's, but this is, um, there are some other weird things where people are like, but you never point the camera. And there's been other uh, actors that have yeah. gone against George what he has done. And he is an yeah. older guy and he is arrogant. And he uh, is, all that. And you listen, know, he's so no it's like, saint. Right. And, uh, you know, but, and then of course, just the way they're handling it on his wife still just on showing off her tights on, on Instagram and stuff. It's just like, I mean, you got to, like, take a break for a couple of months off Instagram. They can't. It's so strange to people me. People cannot give up Instagram and the love from other people. They're alone in their house for six, with six kids, 
and a nanny and the husband has been awful in a nightmare. Yeah. And it's not enough. It is not enough. I, she has it, got it has to, to get to the enough. love. Somebody has to tell him, just don't. Because I think it looks bad. <laughs> it totally just in like looks a bad. Case. You know, like it looks totally bad, but she can't, she can't stop. It's, it's wild. I just saw her where she cut her hair. Who cares? I know. They, they look, the haircut looked good. It, did, it was a good haircut. I saw That's one of those haircuts, though, that unless it's completely professionally styled, you could look like a Karen. Well, you know what? The next day, it wasn't completely freshly styled, and I thought the exact same thing. <laughs> that it didn't look bored, as good? This is how bored I That's was. That's why when people always go, you should cut your hair. This became, I'm like, you don't understand that a shorter haircut takes more time and more styling effort than hair just to your tit. It is so much yeah. easier to do if you have mm-hmm. decent hair. But yeah. it looks hip and cool when you're, you know, all styled wearing a jean jacket. That's the way I feel about a black turtleneck. I put on a black turtleneck with a whole outfit. looks good. Black turtleneck walking in the afternoon. I look like an old lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. Totally. So, totally. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Um, I would like some water. Thank you. Um, oh, okay. Prince one. Andrew has settled with Virginia Guffrey. Um, you know, who accused him, of course, yeah. of rape and everything else. We are not going to know the amount. No, it's a lot. You it's know, a it, lot. it's what do you royal think family. It is? It's fifty million dollars. I mean, it's something along. I think you're you're talking those type of numbers to really? just make this whole thing okay. go away. I didn't think it was that much. I thought it was more like ten. Okay, let's ten. But you know, mm, okay. it's all being paid for by the taxpayers of 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 uh, England. So. You know what I mean? It's yeah. the money that taxpayers pay to the right. royal family right? But in a weird the, way. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of the royal family, did you hear that there's a horrible scent in the uh, in Meghan Markle's and, and Prince Harry's $15 million mansion? A scent? Like, like it's coming smells. from the sewers? Yes. It's, there's some awful like environmental smell throughout oh, no. Montecito, and it's like affecting them. That happened in a city out here. What was that city that was- I don't imagine just but all the money in the world you can't get rid of a sick smell. There's like this <laughs> there's like a, a famous story. I think I like saw someone reenact or whatever talk about it on TikTok. And it was like this guy um was awful to his wife and um kicked her out of the house and brought his new wife in. And before she got kicked out of the house, she went in the walls and put all this old caviar. Oh, and then the smell of the house was so horrific and smelled so bad that they couldn't sell the house. Yeah. So then she came back and said, "All right, I'll buy the house for this little amount." And the husband was like, "Fine, my my new wife and I can't stand this house." And she went in the walls and got rid of the the smelly caviar. <laughs> but I just okay. thought that's such a such a genius thing. It's like create put some fucking dead animal. Yeah. Like where you're just like, where it's, I remember in my sorority once, we did not know what the smell was on the third floor at the Gamma Phi house <laughs> and could not figure it out. was like, di- we were all dying and it was a built in desk and a rat had gotten into the back of the desk in the wall and died. Yeah. So I'm just uh. saying, if you're trying to do something, it can't get rid of a scent and it'll drive someone crazy. What is that? So originally I thought it was something like that. Like somebody yeah. went in the walls to screw over at Megan, Megan and Mark. Harry's place. But now I guess it's an environmental thing. Oh. Okay. This is kind of interesting. I know you're not a big housewife person, but I thought you'd just find this interesting. Kathy Hilton, who is in her second season, you know, oh, Paris's okay. mom, she yeah. is a, an all time favorite that all the fans love her. People Supposedly, love her. she demanded a lot of money. She's getting a lot of money to be on Housewives. Right. Lisa Renna, you know, who is been on a long time, she got pissed. They, they had something that went on. There's a rumor going on that when they're in Aspen, Kathy Hilton asked a DJ to play Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. And the DJ said no. And she got furious and apparently treated the DJ badly, maybe did some slurs. I don't know. Talked about, you know, we're leaving. We're going to exercise our white privilege and leave. And then this is all rumored to be. And then that is then she sent a cease and desist to Lisa Renna not to talk about that night because it wasn't on camera. Also, okay? oh, Lisa Renna was with her at the, at the club. Right. And it may have not shown Kathy Hilton in a great light. <laughs> Then Kathy Hilton doesn't go to the last day of filming, which is like their end of the year party, right. whatever. Because instead, she went to a Donald Trump Super Bowl party. Oh, at the Mar-a-Lago. I guess it's at Mar-a-Lago. Anyway, Rinna, This year. I thought it was now, a lot of people at Mar-a-Lago, yeah. 
So this year, Rinna is posting that Kathy Hilton... So that's where she was, Lena wrote, uh, Lisa Rinna wrote. Kathy Hilton, the mother of Paris Hilton, was at Trump's Super Bowl party. Oh, that's where she, because she got out of filming. Now, what I've always said about these women, especially Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, where half right. of them are professional actresses, they get so pissed if they have to spend a day filming with a mic on their pack, on their butt, yeah. and their makeup, and someone else just says, oh, I'm sick, or whatever. Right. Because they're like... They treat it like, you know, burr, burr, like a factory punching their car. Why did I have to be there? So she's super pissed that she didn't show up. And now she's like, oh, I'm going to get you canceled because you went to a Trump Super Bowl party. Well, I start reading the comments because now all these other bloggers picked it up. <gasps> Kathy Hilton went to a Trump party. Kathy Hilton. Another half the people are like, so what? Yeah. So she got invited to a killer party and went. Yeah. So what? Like, do you not realize half of the country would probably go to Trump's party too. Right, like right, right. whatever. Um, but I just think calling out people that go to a party because in the past you could just go to a party and no one would know. Uh -huh. You know? I know. Now if you get invited to a controversial party, what are you gonna do? Say I won't I can't take a photo with you? What if someone gets the back of your head? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You said you wanted to, you wanted me to hook you up with incredible parties for Super, for Super Bowl, Bowl weekend. And I got one person told me they were about. They said they were hooking us both up with that big party that Kodak Black wound up getting shot at. Uh, you know, the the one with oh, Justin the nightclub Bieber. One? Yeah. They, and then, of course, it never happened. They were like, w trust me, it's done. And I never heard. So I never, we didn't get any, unless you Somebody probably Somebody said they were t inviting me to a Kettle One something party. I don't know if it was like before the Super Bowl yeah. at Sophie State. I don't know. There was some good Obviously, ones. Obviously, but... with the with knocking my head, yeah, I was not going to go. Down. But you went out of town anyway. No, I know. I was gone anyway. I just wanted to get invited. I wasn't going to go. Let me just say, the lack of invites. Yeah. From my Sundance to this, like that's what I was trying over. to say. It is over. I know nobody is inviting me to shit. But that, that good, you just stay home. Like what is it? Look what happens when you're out there. You're I know. Well, listen, at DJs listen. And I have tracks. been invited to a controversial party in the past. Uh, yeah, I remember. And I, and I, Are you, do you, could you say what it was? Oh, there was been you two. were invited There's to Mar-a-Lago at one time, right? At one time, I was. Yeah. Um, I was. Now I'll say I that. I did not and go. I, we, I did we, not I know. go. We talked about it. But I have it. to say, the curiosity. Of course. But I, I knew no one would, yes, some right. Juicy Scoopers would appreciate how, who gets yeah. to go? It's like getting invited to the White House. Yeah. You know, like, why wouldn't you go? Like, you know, I'm just curious about it. But um, I knew no yeah, way. It's too tough. Yeah. No way. I, I, this is not something I'm willing to. Well, there was quite a few people at the Super Bowl party. There was Bill Belichick, the coach of, you know, the New England Patriots was there. Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister sang. And then Donald Trump was up on stage with him singing, We're not going to take it. <laughs> this is all real. <laughs> so it was wild. I and mean, Kathy Hilton. And Kathy Hilton was there. But, but this is, I actually think, going to backfire. And, and make Kathy even more popular because I don't think people are going to like. I don't think it's any surprise that Kathy Hilton probably leans a little Republican. I but mean, I also, that... I just think people are like, no, you know, we've been, you know, pointed out for going out during the pandemic, pointing out if our mask wasn't yeah. properly like, and now you're going to tell on us that we, you know, point out, oh, you didn't put this whatever political thing right. on your page oh we were, you actually worked this day when we were supposed to do this social media blackout like i just think people are like shut up right and so i actually think kathy hilton should just not even address it and if it happens and andy asks her she's gonna say she should just say something like um you want me to like pull up the roster of every party you've attended andy yeah right should we ask every bartender that's been here how right. many times you hit on them <laughs> yeah i mean go. like right. what how far do you want to mm -hmm. go burn like, it down burn like, it all down <laughs> i just say like yeah that would be my advice if i was kathy's friend I agree. and she was going to the thing i think she'd be like i was invited to a party my husband wanted to go 
And I went with it. I don't know how hands-on she is with the Hilton chain anymore, but as a person who stays a lot of hotels, I would like to ask her to, you know, can you get a little... Hotels are really hanging on to this COVID thing a lot. Like, we have nothing. No, <laughs> sorry, nothing. Why? Due to COVID. No sheets, no towel. Ta- like, every hotel I check into, like, no no, no restaurants closed. Yeah. Bars closed. No co- COVID. Everything's closed. No nothing. So get back to work. Speaking of uh, Republicans, Megan McCain... Um, posted about her Valentine, as everybody does. A lot of people posted about the love of their life on Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day. yeah. And so she goes, happy Valentine's Day, Ben, to her husband. And then, um, and then somebody wrote underneath, does every thought and sentiment need to be on Twitter? And Joy Behar, Behar wrote, replying to, uh, she wrote, apparently. 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 <laughs> so then Megan took that evidence that she'd written that and said, imagine spending your Valentine's Day trolling your ex-colleague's tweet about her husband. I, honestly, it's ve- it's very good. It's very good, yeah, Megan. Like, good. I mean, I'm kind of like... And she follows me on Instagram and is a dear friend. She comments Megan. on my pictures. Megan is a, is a juicy yeah. scooper. Listen, mm-hmm. I have to say, touche, everybody I'm talked about it. the love of their life. What? Why can't you? Yeah. Like, really? And what a snarky, bitchy thing to say oh i'm sorry that you're you know 80 yeah and you don't see that this is like part of our everyday life is posting and doing this and keeping and people want to see it and if you don't post about your valentine then people are like wait a minute i hope megan's not having trouble with her husband i mean there there comes a little bit of that too where i'm like because i threw up a great photo of myself wearing red and pink and then as the day progressed i was like no mention of Peter, you know? So then I found oh. a cute photo of us when we were young. It was, it was a cute photo. Oh and I was God. like, you know, everybody likes young baby photos more. Yeah. So I was like, this is us when we were young and, you know, hope you can make it this long. I don't know. But I, yeah, so what? I mean, it's just... Well, I like the fact that uh, I didn't post anything about my life and my wife says thank you because she doesn't want any – she doesn't want anyone commenting on anything. But there's a photo of me and another girl online. If you Google my name, there's me and this – from years ago. It's like on a, on, a, uh, on a red carpet with this girl, Lisa Donahue, who wound up – she was the first winner of Big Brother. To go back to Big Brother, she won Big okay. Brother. Okay. Yeah, and? And we went on dates back in the old days. Okay. Like 15 years ago. All right. But everyone thinks it's my wife. <laughs> Oh, so juicy. people constantly post pictures like Chris's wife is beautiful and my wife is beautiful, but that's not her in that picture that everybody posts. So somebody posted on Valentine's Day. Uh, Here's a picture of Chris and his wife. I'm like, that's a great picture, but that's not my wife. Juicy. <laughs> yeah. So um, also super juicy is the Playboy doc. Are you watching? No, not yet. But uh, that's on my list. Well, in this photo is his girlfriend of many years, who's pretty compelling. She's basically the whole episode called The Circus, which is the latest one. Yeah, it's on Amy. I think it's ten episodes. I think we're on episode five. This is the one where she says she caught Hef uh, doing something with her little dog. Yeah, and then also. Other people being interviewed said that he brought Linda Lovelace, who was the star of Deep Throat mm-hmm. Porn, to the house, and she was so drugged up and everything yeah. that, according to the documentary, a German shepherd, she had oral sex with a German shepherd, and everybody watched. What? Linda Lovelace did? I mean, according to these people that were happened to be there. Oh, I don't know. About so, that. you know, it's... um. It's a real dark world. And basically, like, I had heard things where he would watch gay porn when he'd have the orgies with the girls next door type of girls back then. So I was, you know, I was like, oh, I didn't know he was gay. Then she also said he had a best friend that was always around that she believed he wanted, that he would flirt with and have sex with or whatever. And the whole idea is she's just like, I couldn't satisfy him. Yeah. Like, you know, and then he, there was this interview where he goes, well, it's just like a kid in a candy shop. If uh, if every day he has candy, eventually he's going to want something else. Uh-huh. So it's like just because I have all these girls to screw, each one more beautiful than the next. Yeah, I'm going to get bored of that, and I'm going to go want to go to toys and orgies and same sex right. and yeah. That's- and then in one interview, listen, I I've had a lot of candy in my life. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, this is great candy. Can I have a German Shepherd's dick? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Obviously, I don't agree with it. Yeah. But in one interview, this guy goes, hmm, but you've never featured bestiality in your magazine. <laughs> I'm like, and he goes, yeah, well, um, you know, I... I, it's about, you know, two people enjoying it. And like, he's like, I don't know if the animals would enjoy it. Just very bizarre that that question was even yeah. asked. And of course, people on his side say, you know, she's making it up. But she was this beautiful girl at 19 that uh, went to the Playboy Mansion with her girlfriend. Yeah. And he immediately like pursued her. They had sex. She was like madly in love with him. And then by 25, She'd had to have like so much gay sex and orgies and she had like a kidney infection and they wouldn't take her to a regular doctor. And she's like, I looked at myself and I was just like, and it's just haunted me ever since. Like yeah. she did get married and have a child, but now she just like paints in the woods or what. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I Isn't just, that how it ends for all of us? I mean, though? I just, she's like, I don't believe that anybody would truly love me if I don't look like the way I look like when I was 25. And it's kind of a good lesson because I think there's so many girls, especially in this society I talk about with like the sugar babies and getting that coin and the OnlyFans and all this stuff. And the same thing applies that my mother told me a million years ago. You know, your what? face is not going to last forever. No. Like you got to, ha you, it, your, but your brain will. Like, and it is so true with all the plastic surgery in the world and everything Right. And and the, he always wanted a young girl because a, a a woman, a real woman, a grown woman, like 35 and above, would see him for right. what a narcissistic dick he is and that he doesn't really care about you. But a 19-year-old, it's like why when I interviewed like Kendra and when you hear about Holly Madison, they just didn't want to work. Yeah. Right. They were like, this is fun. Which is what I always – don't no, like, nothing comes easy. Like eventually – you think it's like, oh, this is the easy way in, the, into show business or whatever. And eventually, the, you have to – the real I don't happens. think people realize because they're like, oh, I can screw this person and, you know, it's only a few minutes and I take a shower and whatever. I don't think they realize like the years of that, what yeah. that does to your psyche. Right. And that you're not – eventually not able to get out of bed and not have self-respect for yourself. And, and then you lose those years to actually build a real business and and – yeah, and you think that you're this hot thing, but you've got to know you're so disposable. It's like, especially when you're like 20 and he's 50. Right. Like 30-year difference, that guy is not, you know, uh, chances – and you've – and this has happened, you know, oh, but I get him. I like to watch Casablanca. Shut up. Oh, that's my favorite one you used to say. Just, old, just what a bunch of 20-year-old girls want. Every go, Sunday. Yeah, movie night. <laughs> the old cronies. And just like, ugh. Right. Uh, and yeah, I, I just, it's I remember pretty fascinating. When I first got to LA witnessing it, it was like, there used to be a hot bar on Sunset called Barfly. Yes. And I went to Barfly I one Barfly. night. Yeah, I went to Barfly one night. And he came walking in with seven, you know, blonde oh. girls with him. And they, you know, they had, of course, a little area where they, they would were go out Wednesday. Off. Yeah, yeah. It was like nights, a Wednesday night. Yeah. And then, of course, they go, you know, somebody, he was like, I want to go to the dance floor or something. <laughs> it's so, it was like, so they're all around him, Dan. And he's uh, just sitting there moving like an old 80 year old man would. Right. Yeah. And I was like, oh, just stay home, old timer. Like the old woman. Remember, he had that old woman who was his assistant just sitting in a, she was like sitting in a locker with a bunch of, sound about a bunch of dusty yeah. books. And then when they they show that woman back, like she'd been with him for like four yeah, years. She was in like a, and at one time, like she was a playmate. And then she just had to start doing the bookkeeping. <laughs> you know what guys are that like Twilight Zone where the guy goes to do an interview with an old yeah. movie star and the butler is like 90. Yeah. And he's like, who's that? And she still looks young. How do you look so young? And it's like, basically, it was a Twilight Zone. She like sold her soul to the devil. Yeah. But the old butler was actually her husband. Oh. So he was aging normal. Right, right. And she like had sold her whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, remember in just... Girls Next Door, they would, they would always open the closet and a woman would be in there. <laughs> yeah. The old lady would be like in a closet. Hafner, you're going to no, be she... late for your meet. <laughs> she had a little... 
<laughs> office. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But it was. Yes. It wasn't very. It wasn't a very palatial office. You know what I mean? Yeah. It felt like a little cramped closet she was in for 50 years. And then, the, and then for those people too, you know, they get so comfortable, just like any other job. I know how to do this job. Yeah. I don't want to learn a new job. I like the perks. I, you know. But I know that, you know, this girl's getting burnt out. And then some girls would do the orgy and just, like, run away. You never hear from them again. And I always think about that sometimes when I just see, like, old people walking around L.A. I'm like, you know those people fucked a lot. Like, you just don't (laughs) think about it because you see it old. Oh, isn't she sweet? And you're like, "Mm, she's 68, 70. Yeah. Chances are she was at these parties. Mm -hmm. She tried to make it. Like... I kind of love that just like old people are just talking about what freaks they were. Good. Let's, yeah, I'm all right with that. I'll have to watch this one. I I was always a little skeeved out by the Playboy Mansion. It's never, it was never my thing. I always found it to be, yeah. you know, I didn't like the, even watching Girls Next Door, which was kind of fun, like, but just like, uh, like the I look said, of it, it was, was like old dark mahogany staircase and shit. The whole thing was just creepy to me. I mean, I am so lucky that I was just never a slut. Yeah. Because if I was, I would have been like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll screw this old fart that bought me dinner. But never because I wasn't. So I'd get the dinner. You earned everything you have. Nothing was given to you. No. And if I got the meal or whatever, I'd be like, thank you. I'd write jokes about it later. Like when I was at the Playboy Mansion, I was literally just like observing. I was eating those lamb chops. I was just like (laughs) talking to Carmen Electra. Like I was like... Knew that there was no one person that could hit on me that I'd ever want to go on a date right. with. And I was just like, oh, this is just a good story to tell. Like, I, with- I knew that it would give me cred later on in life yeah. that I was at, like, I knew I had to say yes to the Playboy Mansion, but I was getting tired of going. Yeah. Right before they cut me off because they found out I was married. I was kind of like, mm, another Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> I have to put another little butterfly clips in my hair and, and tra- find some and lingerie. What are you, pass? Is it like a tray pass? Or no, the nerves? food was like amazing. But is it tr- do you go up and get it or is it tray pass? I want to say that it was both. Okay. So there's the tray pass and then you, I'd get like a full plate. And okay. I just remember like eating all the food because I was always hungry. I mean, okay. that's why I think I was thinner back then too because I literally don't think I could afford food. This is going to be – I have some weird questions though because okay, I so, hate eating standing up. That's why oh, I no, hate those tables. type of part. Is there? There okay. are tables. And then I'd be sitting next to a girl and there were the clear plastic chairs. So I'd be sitting next to a girl that was only in paint, you know, uh-huh. and that means no underwear. And I was like, what if she had a little discharge? <laughs> <laughs> I always had oh, underwear and everything yeah. on. But like, I just kind of like, oh, no. you know, but I just knew like when I was invited to these things, I went, you know, because I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. And then when it's like watching the Super Bowl, I was like, th- I'm so glad I didn't try to get a ticket or buy a ticket and then be in this state where right. I couldn't really have fun. But I, I would have thought by now I would have experienced the Super Bowl. Yeah. I don't know if I have to. No, well, you, I mean, if someone invites this me, this was and it's the all, one. It was in LA. I, I mean, know it may never happen years again. It again. Yeah. So, yeah. Same with like you know right. who knows, yeah. but yeah, that. What? No. What was your other questions? You said oh, I, I know. I'm questions. just curious about you know tray pass and what type of because if I go to a party, I don't like a tray. I feel you said lamb chops. I feel lamb chops are not something that are easy to eat standing up. But now you got a bone in your hand. Right. There's nobody coming around with a. Garbage can. And I, now you I always find. I bone. find a little napkin. I put it off to the side. There okay. were lots of people working these parties. These were very, very expensive, exclusive okay. parties. So I have a chicken satay. A lot of times yeah, they I give know. you that thing on a stick. That's hard. Yeah, you got you, a deep throat. Oh. Yeah, you always talk about that. I know. I'm always. I'm next party I have. I'm gonna have yeah. chicken satay. Don't you dare. You. At least do um, a, don't do a nine inch stick though. Do a little stick. Try. Again. I think a shrimp is hard too because then what do you do with the tail? And all of it. I say detail. Get rid of the tail for yeah. a shrimp cocktail. That's it. One egg, so much. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, no, no mess. Um, yeah. I mean, and I mean, I was always like ready to go home, you know, like yeah. I was always just kind of like, okay, now I have to get back on this bus and then I have to go find my car at the UCLA thing. And get I truly believe that's why you're still here in this business and and Because I wasn't a just thriving. slut. Yeah. Because you wanted to go home, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> and I, me too. I'm the same way. I'm still standing because in the end, I just wanted to go home. You know, I didn't get caught up in, in too much in, in all of it. I just want to say to these girls, I know it's enticing when you're following someone on TikTok that's opening some $4,000 Chanel purse bag right. by their sugar daddy who's just... <sighs> In the yeah. end, it's not worth it. In the end, it's not worth it. Watch yeah. this girl. Like, she's not happy painting in the right. woods. No. She's no. just not. And the reality, you got to think escaped, of the reality of if it. If she would have escaped a couple years prior yeah. to when she was not completely broken, if once he said, can you please, like, have sex with these other women around me? And, and if she would have said, you know what? I'm going to go back to my parents' house. I'm going to put this aside. The internet never has to know. Right. Like my next husband that I, my husband that I meet, that's like a aspiring doctor or something. He doesn't have to know that I was at the Playboy Mansion all the time. Nobody uh-huh. would have known. Right. She could have just said, oh, I modeled a little in LA and now I'm back home and um, studying to be a, a, you know, a dental hygienist. Like she could have done that. Right. But she's. Was like no, it's Hef. I'm Hef's girlfriend. Yeah. I'm the number one girl. I can't leave. And now she's, you know, sad <laughs> she's on the painting in the woods <laughs> and not doing this Playboy doc. If you're 22 years old, stay stick with a 22 year old person because the reality, like the gross reality of it, is as a man who's 55, like it ain't great anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, that's the true, like, dried feet and shit. I'm giving you the reality. Like, you're like, look at this purse. You're like, yeah, but look at the shit. The the opening of the Chanel purse, that's 30 seconds of your life. The next 23 hours are going to be dried feet. <laughs> you know, guys, you got to put a truss on or some sort of <laughs> I know. Yeah, so that's, I was... I went to this bar in Tacoma this weekend. I was in Tacoma and I went to some Saturday night show was over and I yeah. I happened to see a bar that was packed. It was a country yeah. western bar. Oh, and I walk fun. in and I swear I'm the oldest person in there by 30 years. Mm-hmm. Everyone's 22. And they're gorgeous. Yeah. The men and the women. Tall, sleek, good looking. And I'm like- So you were the hefter in this. Oh <laughs> my God, was I ever. I had like snacks with me because the, the comedy club had, you know, M&Ms and shit. So I took them to take back to my hotel room. <laughs> and then I had them stacked up on the bars and drinking. Like, yeah. look at this loser with his nutter butters on the bar. Sometimes I get upset when I do go out for a bar after because I've packed my bag <laughs> with too. all the waters and the Red Bulls and the stacks. And I'm like, oh, this bag's too heavy to go to the bar after. Yeah, same way. But, okay, go on. Oh, so there I was like, sitting at the pool with a stack of m and and nutter butters like yeah. some sort of and then I'm just, I'm just looking and like look at like why would the, if this 22 year old attractive girl yeah just need to be with this 22 year old attractive guy that's fun yeah like don't go with some fit gross 55 year old man just so he can open a purse on instagram because that's not the reality the reality is the grossness of it all <sighs> Yeah, so that's, I that's hear my, you. my my. Are uh, you watching here. the Olympics at all? I am a little bit. So I was watching the ice dancing, mm-hmm. and there was a couple that ice skated dancing for six years together. Yeah, before he finally said, "I'm actually in love with you." Whoa! And then she said, "Oh, hmm, never thought of that." Huh? They've been in love ever since. A couple dancing, ice skating together. Wait a minute. I think this is the this is the uh, this is the plot to the Cutting Edge, the movie. The, I think this is the Cutting Edge. Isn't that how that happened? Then there was another couple, and they were just two gay Canadians having a blast. Yeah. Well, I don't know if she was, but he right, was. Right. And um, you know, but anyway, this Perez is is talking about this Perez Hilton, this Camila Valley. Yeah, she's whatever. like the favorite, of favorite. Like they're saying, the greatest skater of anyway, all time. Anyway, Perez is saying he's calling her an epic cheater because she is a Russian doper. Yeah, she's, she's just like uh, Anna. <laughs> yeah, she's, <laughs> she's a Russian who is uh-huh. lying. Uh, the figure skater does not have a heart condition. He writes, she was taking three substances to give her a competitive advantage, and she's being allowed to continue performing the Olympics again. Clean athletes that have worked so hard and fairly. She's only fifteen, and I guess the rules allow this level of a disgusting, total mockery of the sport. Wow, well, Perez Hilton. I didn't realize he was that. Uh... Passionate, passionate about, about yeah. ice skating. Yeah, all right. Well, we, but the, I think they've lifted. They they said that what she's taking is not shouldn't be bad. Whatever. I don't know. She's going <laughs> to skate still, from what I've heard. 
Whatever. I feel like the Olympics is going on way too long. I've been watching it for like three weeks now. And And it's like so sad. There's like 12 people in the audience. I know. That's the other thing, too. But I I guess guess because of COVID or nobody wanted to go because it was China or. Yeah. And it's really cold for the skiing. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Yeah. Okay. Wendy Williams. This is kind of crazy. Wendy Williams is in a lawsuit right now with Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is saying, we don't want to give you access to these millions of dollars because we think that you need a guardianship and we're worried about the person that wants your money. Now, her attorney that's fighting Wells Fargo at one time also represented her ex-husband, Kevin. Right. And they're like, oh, there's no, um, you know, there's it's fine. I could still represent both of them. Yeah. So she's not coming back to the Wendy Williams I kind of feel like Wells Fargo, though, when I heard about Wells Fargo, I was like, well, I think Wells Fargo is doing their due diligence. If if all of a sudden I just came to the bank and was like, give me whatever, all my money out of it. And they're like, okay, you haven't been on TV for a year. Why do you need this money? Right. You know, And it was like her financial advisor that said to Wells Fargo, like, wait, I'm worried about her. But she's like, it's my money. I want access to it. But I don't know. I mean, if it, I kind of feel like, hey, let's just – so what if, if it turns out and you get your money in a month, fine. But don't you feel like Wells Fargo kind of did the right thing to just be like – Yeah, Because what do. if they just given it to her and she, and she is associating with some people that – she right. doesn't realize have her best interest. Then that money's gone forever. Right. I mean, so. Yeah, I agree. So what, is she done? When do we, but, they, cause said, I, they said if didn't she. Didn't they announce a permanent Sherry Shepard? They said if or? she can come back in full capacity by September, we will continue with her as a host and the Wendy Williams show. Right. If come September she is not well enough to take on her duties, it will be the Sherry Shepard show. So she's obviously, are they saying Wendy Williams has some sort of mental issues? We never have been told what yeah. it is. We know she has Graves' disease, but we right. do not know what has kept her from doing the TV show these last months. Wow. Well, I always kind of liked her. I mean, I yeah. loved being on her show, mm-hmm. and I haven't been on the show, you know, in a while. Um, I was on it when she had her first break. And yeah. then I went on it after she came back and she seemed – after she got divorced and she seemed wonderful, yeah, great spirits, all that. Then she left again. Right. In between the COVID and everything. I don't know. Because she had a fainting spell too. Remember on the show? She was she yeah. fainted. Yeah. Um, are you excited about Matthew Perry's book? It's coming in November of this year. If he talks about what – Friends, lovers. Him. Yeah. I mean, if you hear the real story, yeah, it'd be great. Well, it's called Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing. Well, the big terrible thing is drug addiction, right? I'm sure. Yes. Uh, and I think it's still probably happening. I don't know. You know, I, so, something's not right with him. Something's like, not right. Yeah. I mean, even during watching that Friends reunion, he was the just The thing a about off. these tell-all books, though, which I think is like the internet and podcasting is kind of ruined is that within the first day, everybody's done a book report and you can read about it. Oh, and, uh, so yeah, you exactly. already now, just like Jamie Lynn's book, you are, now you know all the juicy parts. Right. So unlike going, oh, read this book, Gone Girl, you know, like a, a fictional book, it's so juicy, yeah. no spoiler. Like that's different and it's kind of a bummer because – Yeah. Or unless you're like a really funny person and you have a bunch of funny stories that's not just spilling juice – yeah, I mean, this one's yeah, exactly. This will be something you hear the two good stories that he has, and otherwise, oh, who that cares? he was up for this part we didn't know, yeah. or that he called this person on the phone and said this in the middle of the night, and yeah. that's why they're not friends anymore. Like, we're gonna hear all. He the dated two- some like Julia Roberts, and there's got to be good stories there. He or is that? Some- it, or is the big terrible thing when that young twenty two year old or whatever screwed him on on a Tinder face? Like she met that's him right. on like Raya, yeah. and then. FaceTimed him yeah. and then fil- had her friend film the FaceTime and he didn't look great. Mm-hmm. And then she posted that and people were like, that's not right. right. You went on this show. But she's like, ew, why is this 55-year-old hitting on me? I feel like he could have that, – that's the picture for the cover? I feel like he could have done better than that. I feel like that's pretty appropriate. Really? Like these days, that's Matthew Perry, I guess. Yeah. I think the eyes look nice and the hair looks good. And, you know, you know yeah. the worst thing about him is he – he needs to get like a lower facelift, but um, mm-hmm. so it doesn't look that bad there. I know. As a guy with a weak chin also, I, 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 I yeah, It happens. I Me too. Okay. Yeah. Tristan Thompson is to pay 120 a month. So each baby mama gets 40 grand. The okay. latest baby mama 
says that he's not been in her life at all. So Us Weekly says, two months after giving birth to Tristan Thompson's baby boy, Marley is alleging that he hasn't been in the infant's life. Okay. Except for the 40 grand. Yeah. But uh, Pete Davidson did send flowers to Chloe. Oh, good. For what? For Valentine's Day? Just because he felt sorry for her. How many flowers? Because the Kardashians like to overdo it with the flowers. I saw a truckload of- So Kanye did a big truck. But where was that truck? Where did it come- He just parked it somewhere in Hidden Hills. Oh, so but she was in Staten Island or something at the time. Yeah, wasn't she wasn't she? even there to receive the yeah. truck. So, so she, she gets a big truck and a bunch of. Ro- now it's just a pain to now deal with. Oh. Now you got to give the truck to your assistant. The flowers aren't in vases. Like, like do you imagine the staff of the Kardashians, like on, on Valentine's on, Day, on like the day after, like, oh, this is going to be a tough one. We've got to sweep yeah. up all these flowers. Yes, and, all the petals, yeah, right. all the. Yeah. So that's a tough one. Too yeah. many, too much. Yeah. Anyway, did you talk about um what on on did did you talk about the host of the Oscars? Oh, yeah, but it's competing with our live Juicy Scoop, so why would I want to talk about but that? They're, but they announced hosts. Yes, it's Amy Schumer and Wanda Sykes and somebody the, else. Yeah, who's not a comedian, the other yeah. person. But, uh, yeah, it three women. Yeah, but it's interesting that there's three hosts back. and it, Yeah, our live Juicy Scoop. Come to our live Juicy Nobody's yeah. going to care about the Oscars. No one's I mean, going to care. Gonna be the... um, a flight attendant knocks out a passenger who tried to open an airplane door. I saw that. So good for yeah. was that a girl? Oh no, they used a, a coffee a crazy pot. Crazy guy, yeah. Um, um, I want to just go right to my our post here. Do you watch the show on HBO? Uh, first of all, do you watch the one that everyone's talking about with uh, about the drugged out kids on HBO? That Euphoria. Yes, I've watched. Everybody is telling I've watched me. the first couple episodes of the first season. Mm-hmm. I have to catch up. I think it's done very well. Yeah. Makes me really grateful for my own kids. People love it. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but here we are at the Brea Improv. Chris, you are joining me on March 25th and 26th at 7.30 and 9.45. So we'll be doing stand-up those nights. Yeah. And then on the 27th, it is the Super Bowl of Juicy Scoops. I already have you, Sarah, and Justin Martindale committed yeah. Um, might be extra people too. I'm not sure, but it is going to be, you know, a no holes bar kind of situation. I, I love really that. Fun. Uh, I love that all of us, uh, me, Kelowna, and Justin, all use a picture from 15 years ago. I don't think it's 15 really? years ago. It's definitely so, mine. First certainly of all, Annie, is. Annie did. Yeah, Annie I, did. The I, that's photos. Really the, yeah. Oh, it's great. I'm fine with the picture. I'll text you next time. No, it's oh, good. Man, I'm good with on. it. I'm good with it. God, you're so critical. Yeah. Chris, what else do you have going on? Uh, we well, the show the I show. wanted, to, the show I wanted oh, to talk me. about that I love. Yes, I, I don't know if you have watched is the Bridget Everett show on oh, HBO. Oh, I, I Bridget somebody Everett, somewhere I believe it's called. I, I have contacted Bridget via Twitter, and I, she said she will do the show in a couple months. I would like to be her friend. She's a great actress. She's great. I'm a fan. I love this show. Yeah, I don't know why people. I, I've told people about it. Like it's boring. Oh. Uh, yeah, you got some hate the other day. I did. Why? Because uh, you recommended another awful film that a Juicy Scooper was subjected to. Which one? Tick, tick, boom. Mm-hmm. Tick, well, tick, boom. Read the other people. Ninety-five percent of the people said it's a great movie. It's one of the best pictures of the year. And that one person, yes, go ahead. I'm going to say What's it again. What's it about? It's about Jonathan Larson, who wrote Rent. He died before Rent came out, and it's basically his life before Rent. It's a musical. It's fantastic. It's great. Okay. Tick, tick, boom. It's on Netflix. Nope. They have an issue with you. All right. That one person has an issue. I'm, I can handle that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I Listen, I admit that uh, licorice pizza was a bad call for you. It wasn't the best call for you because it's a, kind of a, you know, it's, it's a, it's an odd movie. Yeah. So that's all. Is there any Oscar type of movies you do think people should see? Besides- West Side Story. Besides West Side Story, Tick, Tick, Boom, and Licorice Pizza, is there anything else? Um, no, I won't say Power of the Dog. It's good, but people will hate it. <laughs> Peter talks about that being the worst movie he's ever yeah, seen in his I life. <laughs> okay. Isn't that like a Brokeback Mountain situation? Yeah, yeah. It's, there's a lot to Do they it. have sex with a dog? No. I, oh. God, no. Anyway. That would be better, I think. <laughs> no. Anyway, no. There's nothing in the Oscars that anybody would be interested in. Outside. There's nothing like... That's fr- friendly to all people. Yes. You know? There's no like, yeah. No. No, no there's no one. Titanic or. I know, Titanic. Yeah. Dr- Brandon asked me the other day, what is your favorite movie? And I said, I think for just a cinematic, just 
Get under the covers. Watch when it comes on. It's Titanic. It will always be Titanic. Well, there's love. There's history. I agree. It's beautiful. And it holds it's up, too. Rich. It's pretty good. It's, like, shocking when you think about, like, what yeah. if I was on that boat? That, to me... I'm like, remember when I went to see it, where, what theater I went to, I went by yep. myself in the afternoon. Like that is it. And then, um, well, can I, I went, yes. uh, Valentine's night. I was alone in my hotel room after my shows and I watched ghost was on because they were showing like romantic mm-hmm. movies Yeah, and it, it, you know, it holds up. It's good. Okay. Cause it's a great movie, but the special effect, we've come a long way with special effects. <laughs> like it's so bad. And when he gets, you know, up to heaven. On oh, no, the streets. Oh my God. It's just like, it's really. Yeah. I mean, they need to remake it or just fix those scenes with the special effects. But um, the also, um, what was the other movie we were talking about? Oh, Marry Me with J-Lo. You can Ooh. watch on Peacock. I heard it's really, really bad. Like some Juicy Scoopers are liking it. Oh, God. Oh, I talked to a friend who said it was the worst thing he's... See, I don't know. Maybe Juicy Scoopers aren't the best uh, t- uh, movie critics. I don't know. I, I think it looked awful. I'm not an Owen Wilson fan anymore. Yeah. I mean, I liked him 20 years ago. I don't like him now. I just think he totally looks like an old Irish lesbian nun. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like could, I have the same look, so I'm a little offended. Job, and it's just like, yeah. I just I just can't. And now also knowing that he's like, been an absentee father to like half his kids i'm just not into it i also feel like j-lo i like j-lo i just feel yeah. like she puts herself in movies with where people have zero chemistry with like d- like what chemistry with her and owen wilson or her and ray fines like the people she's done movies with like there's no way you two would have any type of chemistry whatsoever like find somebody who you'd have a little bit of chemistry with and it might be a better movie to watch i don't know i don't know who's casting these movies chris I love you. Cover to covers Thank the podcast. You. Cover to covers the podcast. You're going to be with me in Brea, in Brea. March 25th, 26th, 27th mm-hmm. for the live Juicy Very Scoop. Very excited about that. Do you have any other date that you'd like to push? Hyenas, Dallas, Texas. Coming okay. to Dallas, Texas this 25th and 26th, next weekend. Wow. Friday great. and Saturday night, Hyenas in Dallas. And then after that, I'm coming to Naples, Florida, Off the Hook Comedy Club in Naples, Florida. And that is March 11th and 12th. And 13th, I believe, Naples, Florida. Good for you. Off the Hook Comedy Club and in Dallas. Love you. Love you back. Thank you for having me again. Always.